Greetings and welcome to an LGR computer thing related to old computers, but this is not actually an old computer, even though it has old components inside. This is what became known as the Lazy Green Giant, a Windows 98 Pentium 3 build that I put together last year, 2019. And this was based on an existing project PC that I've used for LGR for, well, since the beginning, really. I had always wanted to paint it, make it sort of a dark green, dark teal. So I finally did that and put all sorts of other new components in there and just redid the whole thing and came up with this. And originally, it looked pretty cool. I liked the idea of Plasti Dip and stuff because I'd used it on car components and hubcaps and things like that. However, for a... <laughs> For this, it was it ended up being terrible. Uh, as you can see, there's bits of scuffing that have just you know started peeling off. And sure, I've resprayed it twice now, but that ends up building up even more of a layer of this rubberiness that kind of conflicts with some of these things. Like this is getting harder to press in, and the discs are like it's just you know it's adding layers of that rubbery plasti dip stuff. And so yeah, it, it starts scuffing and peeling off uh, different components, and and then there's the fact that. Because of that rubberiness, you're getting a buildup of things like dust and hair and grime, and you can take a wet cloth and rub it over there and get a good chunk of that off, but it still builds up extremely easily and it's very visible. And even then, like the finish is just becoming uneven at this point. So yeah, screw this whole situation. <laughs> I was never particularly happy with this case anyway, so I'm just gonna replace the case. And I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it, but uh, it's got to peel off this plastic dip. I'm not going to do that today. I just want to replace it with a better case as well as swap out some of these components in there. Uh, we'll get to that, but let me just show you the, the, the case that we're going to be using. Oh yeah, here we go. Check this out. This is something that I've been wanting to use for a good while now. Picked this up some time ago and I've just had it in storage ever since. This is a uh, new old stock Lian Lee case, the PC60, really the PC-62, a little bit later. This is like from their earlier mid-2000s or something. I believe the original case design stems from the late 90s or thereabouts. So yeah, we're going to be installing it in this case, but also I've got some components that we're going to be swapping out and upgrading as well. I'm going to be keeping a lot of the internal stuff in the graphics card, motherboard, CPU, and RAM, and all that, and sound card, but I'm going to replace the optical and disk drives for a couple reasons. Um, for one thing, <laughs> they're green now, and I, like I said, I'll peel off this stuff later, just not today, I don't feel like doing it. But I also just wanted to take care of some of these other things that have been bothering me ever since I built this. So, um, yeah, first off, got a three and a half inch, 1.44 meg floppy disk drive here, just standard black drive. But I am going to be using one of these here. This is just a regular one. No, this is not. Dang it. This is a CD-ROM drive. Well, I meant to pick up <laughs> a DVD-ROM from my storage. I guess I didn't. I know I have a couple. Anyway, I'm going to put a plain DVD drive in there instead of the burner that's in there right now. And I'm also going to be putting in an IBM personal computer, five and a quarter inch, 360K floppy disk drive. It's a new old stock one from Computer Reset, like the one that I put in my new XT build a while back. The floppy drive that's in here is a 1.2 meg high density drive, and eh, that's fine. It's just that pretty much everything that I play in here, in terms of like floppy disk games on a five and a quarter inch, are going to be on 360K discs like this. And the other thing, writing. I want to do things with writing five and a quarter inch floppy disks on 360K. And this just, it's not built for that. It's not the greatest for it. There's issues with writing 360K disks on a 1.2 meg drive like this. And then the other thing that I'm gonna be swapping out is in the back here. You may remember that I put in this nice little IDE to SD card reader instead of a hard drive, and it works great. I really don't have many complaints about it except for the form factor itself. I kind of cobbled together, well, let me just show you. Yeah, it was on one of these brackets in the back, but I discovered that the bracket was kind of in the wrong spot and it went right up against the motherboard and I could have actually installed it in there, so I just kind of had it dangling around. And so what I did to combat that later on after that video was I sort of mangled together <laughs> a couple different brackets uh, and just sort of screwed it into this one and made it work. And it, it doesn't really, 
it was this was just a quick fix. You know, I never intended this to be permanent. And because it's a project box, I really didn't care about aesthetics too much, but I've begun to care, dang it. So I don't wanna use this anymore. I was thinking about just going to this front loading three and a half inch drive bay uh, CF adapter instead. And I mean, this would work great, but I just don't wanna use compact flashcards anymore. Um, and unfortunately I cannot find any SD to IDE adapters that go in the front like this. I mean, I could make a custom bay if I had a 3D printer or something, but yeah, you know, or Dremel something out. I don't know, I tried Dremeling something out and I was not happy with my results. So I found this instead. What we've got right here is an SD card to SCSI adapter instead of IDE. Same basic idea, but it's a front loading one and it has a black three and a half inch drive bay bezel right here. So front loading SD card instead of having to go to the back. And then it's also got a little micro USB there for uh, something, I don't know. But anyway, I think this will work great. And I already have a SCSI card in there. So hopefully it's just a matter of hooking up that 50 pin cable and making it work. And then finally, the last thing that I wanna do, this is totally optional, but I wanna try it, is I wanna put one of these babies in there. This is a Creative Sound Blaster AW64 Gold card. Yes, indeed. I've never used one of these models. I've used some of the later ones, but this is the one I picked up, I don't even know when. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just a cool card. You got RCA out and everything, but it gives me more compatibility for DOS games and OPL3. I mean, you know, so what I have in here is the Aureal Vortex 2 card, and that has some pretty decent, actually, DOS emulation for things like FM synth uh, ad lib compatibility. And the Sound Blaster support is actually pretty good, but there's a lot of my favorite games, especially shareware games, that don't work so well with that. So I'm thinking if I can set it up properly and you know, make sure there's no conflicts, then I can get both of these inserted in there. Whether or not I can use them both at the same time, I don't know, but at least have them both in there and disable one or the other depending on my needs. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do. Let's put all this together and uh, I don't know, play some games or something. You know, LGR stuff, I'm excited. some thingies here. Check this out. Aluminum PC case designed for high performance PC system. There was on the other side. So they had aluminum bezels even for CD and DVD ROMs to match your cases. Aluminum mouse pads. Some well illustrated installation stuff. Very clearly labeled. Good grief. Check out that breakdown schematic. That is awesome. <laughs> It is so much deeper than I thought it would be. Oh, that's what I said. Whatever, man. I'm committed at this point. Oh, dude. Back it up. Get it all in the frame. Look at that. That is seriously well put together. They've even uh, kind of smoothed out these edges. All right, so, oh man, that comes off very easy. <laughs> A lot easier than that other case I'm currently using, dude. Components and things, yeah, dude. Look at that. Even got little protective plasticky bits here again to make sure you don't scrape yourself on those sharp edges. Let's see what's in here. All right, got an I/O shield. Whole lot of screws and rubber standoffs. Various adapter cables. What, what, what are these? Oh, fan control. It's definitely overkill for this computer, but there we go. Look at all these. Three Noctua fans. Well, those are a little bit different looking than more modern Noctuas, that's for sure. Don't have any of that signature tan and brown going on, but either way, good to have these. Something else I'd like to give a shot here, this whole motherboard, like tray, I.O. section, I think comes right out. Oh yeah. <laughs> Very convenient. Uh, the case that I'm replacing does have a slide out a back portion for the motherboard, but uh, uh, this is, I don't know, a little different. That's really awesome. I'm gonna put it together, I guess, on here and then slide it all into place. That, oh, I like this already. Oh yeah. 
Well, let's go ahead and get everything out of this one. Well, all the components that I want to keep anyway and put them in here and get Windows 98 going with some games. Yeah, it's disassembly time. case once again. Well, mostly. Leaving those in there because I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Something. Someday. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Although, I believe a fan controller should be on the agenda for the future. No big deal though. This has never been a warm system by any means over the past year or so. Nope, nope. What am I doing? Got to install the I.O. panel first. <laughs> I went uh, so far as getting the whole thing screwed in before realizing. There we go. Now with our shield in place, we can get to screwing. All right, time for some cards. Voodoo 3 card here. Diamond Monster Sound. Aureal Vortex 2. Ethernet card that I have still not used in this system. SCSI controller. And our Sound Blaster AW64 that I have not installed besides this particular Aureal card before, so we'll see how that works. That is an awesome setup. <laughs> we don't even have it installed in the case yet. Uh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That is so satisfying. Time for some power cables. You know, I just now thought to check. I wonder if this has a PC speaker installed. Yes, it does. Huh. Right there. Exact same spot as the other one. Fantastic. And it's a cone as well. It's not a little piezo garbage junk. All right. Let's wire all these up. Ooh. All right, drives, let's get them installed. This is such a cool case. This is not sponsored. I just really like this. Listen, listen, listen to this. So I think I'm gonna put this here. The screw goes right here. Okay, well, I guess that's what this little contraption is for. I gotta say, that's kind of an annoying design because there's only one set of screws on each side like that. It's like, yeah. For not being a floppy drive, that sure is floppy. I think I am gonna put it the other way around because at least it'll smush downward onto the floppy drive, the actual floppy drive. That makes more sense. Floppy cable here, and SCSI cable. 
Nice. We're gonna unbox this lovely thing. Oh man, opening these new old stock drives never gets old. By definition, it gets old. But anyway. Oh. Fantastic. Yeah, there are some uh, existing little scuff marks where you I can see that there were a couple of drives actually installed here previously. So I guess this uh, case wasn't quite new old stock. It was <laughs> lightly used old stock. It was certainly in really well repacked condition. Maybe it was a refurb or like return unit or who knows what, display unit, something. I obviously it wasn't brand new. Go ahead and... Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, does it not reach? It does not. Ah! Well, that's a pain. Wow. Yeah, the case is too deep. It would have reached. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Hmm. Guess that's gonna have to wait. Well, at least get the IDE CD-ROM installed. <laughs> I gotta say, it's kind of annoying having this here because I can't see what I'm doing. For now, I guess I'm just gonna take this out and just dangle it over there a little bit closer. Ironic. I got this thing so I wouldn't have to dangle anything and here I am gonna be dangling things again, dang it. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's fine, everything's, everything's fine. See if it works. Okay, powering it on. And it powers on, which I already knew because I've actually been screwing around with this for about half an hour, trying to figure out this uh, little SD card adapter. Because it's not as straightforward as I hoped it would be, unfortunately. In fact, there's a few different things I gotta tweak already. Uh, I move this down here so I can actually get the cable to reach, which is actually what I did with the other one. I just, I forgot about that, the whole A and B priority thing. Um, anyway, when it loads up the SD card, it's not actually looking at the card itself to just see what it is. It actually goes to whatever the default is on the board itself, and then just tries to load the card based on the defaults, which the defaults weren't good. It was set to like two gigabyte hard drive, and I have a 64 gig card in there formatted to 32 gigs, and that was set for the IDE configuration that I had on the other build for this Windows 98 PC. So I had to actually connect it to a modern computer and download the utility to reconfigure the SCSI 2SD board itself. Uh, mine's a V5, by the way. So this is formatted to 32 gig and it's set to 64. Anyway, it seems to be working. And there we go. We have Windows 98. It's the same as still says lazy green giant right here. I can change that, but uh, ideally this solution should not only be more convenient in terms of having it in the front whenever I get the proper cable for it, but should be a little bit quicker too. From the benchmarks that I've seen, SCSI 2SD with you know the right configuration will actually run quicker in terms of like smaller read writes and everything like that. Sometimes with a ton of little files, it would really bog down. It took a while to write to SD cards over the uh, IDE interface, uh, at least the ones that I had, but. Yeah, whatever. Okay, uh, I'm done with this. So let me uh, turn this off and I'm gonna go and finagle with things and see if I can get these other deals working. Morning. I've been working on this thing all night and I am extremely satisfied with how it's turned out. So I've made some tweaks. I've moved this down here so that I can actually plug it in using the same cable. Still haven't gotten a long enough SCSI cable or adapter to fit the SCSI 2SD thing, but it's down here plugged in and working. And I had to take out the Ethernet card, I don't know, for now, because I was trying to get both of those sound cards working. I was running into some IRQ conflicts and it was just nice to free up a little bit of resources, but now it's good, I think. As you can see, I've changed the OEM info and yeah, now it's updated. It's called the Megaluminum Monster. Yeah, I don't know, it sounded cool at the time at like 2 a.m. 
So uh, yeah, everything is in here. And yes, including the AW64. I have uh, disabled the Aureal Vortex 2's Sound Blaster Pro emulation because we just don't need it. We've got the proper Sound Blaster in here now. The only thing that isn't really working is the joystick port on the Vortex. Again, don't need it because the AW64 has one. And now that I have these two sound cards in there, the way I have this set up is around back. I've got the line out of the all real card going into the line in of the AW64. And then of course the AW64's RCA outputs are going out to some speakers. So check this out. I, <laughs> let, let me just show you, this is so cool. Look at all these MIDI synths I have. Yeah, I got MIDI outs and synths and MPU-401s and wavetables. So both the AW64 and the Vortex have wavetable output for MIDI, but it also has the Creative Music synth, which is just an OPL3. So you get that classic Sound Blaster 16 kind of ad lib sound. Okay, so you got that, but choose the AW64's MIDI synth and apply that. Same track, same spot. That's a cool sound. I know a lot of people are rather fond of the wavetable on these all cards, but I'm, I'm kind of not. It's all right. I do, however, really like the wavetable sound of the Vortex. So check this out. And because of uh, the way it is, you also have uh, access to the effects on the Vortex. So. Yeah, man, I just really like this for a general MIDI. I love the sound canvas, and of course, anything related to Roland stuff is good, MT32. That's not general MIDI, but it's a good option for DOS. But this one in particular, because they are both cards and they're internal, I don't have to hook anything else externally. I don't have to mess with a MPU 401 interface and like a box sitting outside here that I have to plug in. Like, I like that stuff for other setups. But this one, I just wanted everything in one, and it works. And it also lets me choose different synths for DOS games that use general MIDI. So for instance, I've got Duke 3D here. And if you just set the, well, uh, okay. First I have the sound effects card set to the AW32, which yeah. So you get that full stereo 44.1 kilohertz sound and everything on there. It sounds really good. A lot of simultaneous voices, but then you get the music. And right now it's set to the Vortex. So you can do that, or because I have both of them in here, I don't even have to switch here. I can actually switch it in the options and choosing the general MIDI, I switch the MIDI port. So I have the Vortex set to 300 and the AW64, that's on 330. So now you get that. So maybe there you can kind of get a good example, a good reason why I kind of prefer the Vortex in some cases for Wavetable. I mean, listen to that. I don't know, it's got more of a punch to it. There's more grit to some of the instruments like the guitars and whatnot. It's a radical Wavetable option. And so yeah, when you <laughs> boot up Duke 3D and it's got the Sound Blaster sound. Damn it. That's so cool. I got both. That's exactly what I wanted to make this kind of setup for. Uh, and I could have done it in the other case, but this is just so much cooler. <laughs>
And this also means that I get proper sound in a lot of my favorite shareware games because as decent as the Vortex is at doing some Sound Blaster emulation, it's not quite right. Yeah. It's still not perfect. Uh, I still like the Sound Blaster Pro 2.0. You know, some of those earlier Sound Blaster 16s and such for, eh, you know, I have preferences. I have a lot of different systems for a lot of different things, but this is a wonderful all around kind of solution. Uh, but yeah, let me just show you a couple other things. So yes, uh, floppy drive. We have floppy drive A here working. So we've got 1.44 meg on disks. And so that's cool. And I have a 360K disk in here right now. And uh, yeah, the 1.2 meg drive I had before could read and it could even write to them, but you wouldn't be able to read a 360K written on a 1.2 meg on anything but another 1.2 meg. So if I wanted to take something like, say I was gonna write a balloon challenge here to a 360K disc and transfer this over to my IBM AT or something with a 360K drive or even the new XT, it wouldn't be able to read this disc that I am writing now even though it's a 360K disc on that 1.2 meg drive. But since this is a proper 360K, it reads and writes like all my old games and it's gonna be fantastic for making backups and writing software to discs that I wanna put on older machines with other 360K drives. And yeah, man, and, uh, it's a convenience thing for me. I may also put like a 1.2 meg, five and a quarter inch floppy right here later. Uh, if I can find one that's actually in decent condition in black, I only have gray and beige ones. Oh, and of course the Voodoo card is in here and is working. And let's open up some Unreal Tournament here and just get a quick taste of that, as well as showing how it can take advantage of the All Real Vortex's 3D audio, which you're not gonna be able to hear because I'm recording this with a lapel mic over here and the speakers over there. Anyway, trust me, it'll be 3D sound. <laughs> Really dark. I can't see sh All right, time to frag. Anyway, I don't know if you could really hear the uh, 3D sound difference at all over this mic, but it is turned on. So yeah, let me go ahead and put it all back together and you know, just get the case on there. And assemble it all and get it looking pretty here and you know, finish up the video. Ah, that looks slick. And we can't forget LGR case badge. Only have a few of them left. Gave away like a hundred of them at VCF Midwest. Yeah, that's the stuff. Now it looks complete. All right, well that is the Mega Aluminum Monster put together like 98%. Ah, uh, that dual sound card setup just makes me uh, so excited to screw around with things just, I don't know, for fun. I mean, also making videos, but uh, mostly for fun. And yeah, there's still a couple things to address in the future. Like I've just got the bezel from the SCSI 2SD on the front of the case there. The actual board is still hanging around inside. And I'd also like to see if I can attach a hard disk indicator LED to that board. 
because while it does have an orange indicator on the board itself, there's nothing external. And I like blinking hard disk lights. What can I say? I'd like to hook it up to this one on the case, but there's no header on the board. It does actually look like there's a spot to connect a header, so hopefully that's what it is. And if that's the case, I'm just gonna solder one of those in there. And of course, get the DVD-ROM installed whenever I can find the one I actually wanted to put into this. So whatever, I'll do that and maybe post an update on Twitter. Regardless though, I hope that you enjoyed seeing this come together. You'll absolutely be seeing it again in the future as I have a whole bunch of random Windows 9X projects and this machine will be perfect for it, much more suitable than the Lazy Green Giant. Stick around for that if you'd like. Uh, either way though, thank you very much for watching LGR.